Hello everyone, my name is Richard Janokas, Graduate Consultant in the Technical Enablement Team here at Esri UK, and I'd like to talk to you today about the benefits of sharing and collaboration by way of consulting citizens and stakeholders on initiatives to build stronger communities, and about how technology, and specifically the ArcGIS system, can help with this. In our increasingly digital world, it's more important than ever to stay connected. And for local governments, making decisions to improve our quality of life is essential. Working through a fictitious scenario based around Bristol, this presentation will look at how technology can support both of these through the evaluation of green spaces in urban areas. Our specific example today will explore how Bristol City Council could use the interconnected ArcGIS system to inform, engage and support their community to make use of allotments and other community growing spaces to produce their own fruit and veg. A major aspect of engaging with the community is showing that their needs are understood through clear and transparent communication. The homepage of our hub site does this by outlining why this subject is important to the public and what the council plan to do. We can summarize the personal benefits for individuals in the community, such as having healthier diets, getting more exercise, and relieving stress by being outdoors when taking part in community growing, as well as the wider benefits for the environment, such as reducing their carbon footprints and increasing biodiversity in the area. Demonstrating to the target audience that their interests are at the heart of the proposals. Nice big infographics like this help to emphasize particular points too. There's been a general decline in the last decade in those who make use of allotments and community growing spaces, but a slight increase in the most deprived areas specifically. Despite this, Fewer than half of all allotments and public growing spaces in the area are within the most deprived parts. Demonstrating to the public the reasons behind focusing on this issue. By including two maps, we've provided a really visual method of communicating some of the major takeaways of the proposal. We've shown the location of existing community growing spaces as well as, the, as well as the location of five potential new sites. In one homepage, we've effectively shared with the community the context and products of our plans. Transparency and clear communication continue to be key when sharing more detail with the community. To help generate buy-in and interest from the public, it is important to show how certain decisions in our proposals were made. After all, the active use of communal growing sites by the public will ultimately determine the success of the plans. So how did we decide where to focus our efforts? A series of tools within the ArcGIS system can share this effectively. We start with this interactive 2D map that allows for both panning and zooming into local areas so members of the public can see how the current state of play affects them. By layering data on top of each other, we can show the locations of current communal sites as well as data that reflects the level of deprivation, such as this IMD data from the Living Atlas of the world. We can see that in this particular area of high deprivation, there's a lack of community growing sites available, showing to the public the reasons for focusing on this geographic space. And this is emphasized further through new cartographic, new cartographic styles that highlight the sites against the background data, as well as 2D data, we can share visually impressive 3D data, which again, the public is free to explore as they see fit. Users can search for their local area to see how the current state of affair affects them in three dimensions, as well as use the interactive analysis tools 
to gain more information from the data. This daylight tool, for example, shows how shadows change over an area over the course of a day. Now, when it comes to communal growing of fruit and veg, being draped in shadow for most of the day is obviously no good. So members of the public can investigate their local area to see how shadows affect them over the course of a day and understand, again, why certain areas of the city are being focused on for potential new sites. This is not just telling the community what the data shows, but giving them access to it so they can see for themselves, hopefully building trust between the community and the council through this openness. Other forms of analysis that can be shared with the public is that produced by the Travel Time API available from the Esri UK content team. The map shows existing community growing spaces and areas that can reach these sites within certain travel times via walking. The light pink colour shows areas that can reach a community growing site within five minutes of walking, whilst the red dark colour shows areas over 15 minutes away. Displaying this data visually demonstrates to the public quickly and effectively sites furthest away from community growing sites. We can see here that this central part of the city, which we've earlier identified as being one of high deprivation, is over 15 minutes away from any community growing site. And so combined with the other data we've shared, demonstrates to the public exactly why we've chosen to focus on this part of the city, allowing them to understand the reason behind our thoughts. Being open with the community, sharing our data in an interactive way, allows them to see how the proposal relates to them on a personal and social level, showing their interests are being considered and strengthening the council community relationship. We can enforce this point further by sharing not only data, but also case studies in a narrative driven story map. Past examples of successful bottom up collaborations between the council and the community are highlighted here, demonstrating the value of working together. The use of apps for sharing data and information can be applied in many ways. We've outlined how we decided where to focus our proposed development, but what development is that exactly? Before spending time, money and resources on new sites, we want to maximise the use of existing sites. We've shown where these are on a map, but can expand on the functionality available to the public by using pre-packaged widgets that are available when the map is displayed as part of an application. Here, the public can search for either their local address or a location that's important to them and get a breakdown of all the community growing sites within a certain boundary. Furthermore, they can select a site of interest and get direct navigations to that site from their home. By making this data and these tools readily available to the public, we're empowering them to access and get involved at sites local to them. To ensure the best access to communal growing sites, we want to raise awareness also of the public transport links to each of them. We can layer data on top of each other to show existing sites in green, bus stop locations in black, and the paths taken from each bus stop to their nearest site. By changing the symbology of those routes, where the darkest colours represent longer routes and lighter colours show shorter routes, the public gets a great understanding quickly of the distance needed to travel between certain bus stops and certain sites, allowing them to choose the best route for them. Lastly, we may have identified some possible locations for new community growing spaces. These can be made clear to the public, again, using some of the new cartographic styles 
to emphasize their locations. There's no doubt in this map where the potential new sites are going to be, as we've clearly shared that with our audience, nice and bright on the map. The engagement is the backbone of our collaboration with the community. Once we've communicated and shared our data and information with the community, collaboration can begin by generating and receiving engagement in the form of feedback and opinions from the stakeholders. Our proposed developments affect the public directly. Where new sites go and how their environment is changed matters to them, and its success heavily relies on engagement and involvement from the public directly. This is why finding ways to collaborate with our community is important to build a stronger relationship with them. The ArcGIS system allows for this type of engagement by offering surveys that members of the public can access and complete in large numbers. We can use this tool to get a clear view of our community's opinions and thoughts on what we're proposing allowing us to tailor our approach to the community's needs. We can find out information such as their thoughts on getting involved in community growing, how they might travel to communal growing sites, as well as what type of produce they're interested in growing. Gathering information like this from the public will allow us to create facilities that match their needs and ensure that they enjoy making the use of these spaces we can connect the survey to our map to create a more tailored experience for the public. If they're interested in giving feedback on one of these potential new sites, they can select that site in the map and have the answer auto-populate in the survey, giving a much cleaner and quicker survey experience. Similarly, should they choose certain options in the survey. Other questions more relevant to that part of the survey become available. Again, giving a slicker and more concise survey experience. The better experience the community members have with this survey, the more likely they are to share it with other people they know, generating a much more wider level of engagement. As collaboration works in both directions, there is great value in being transparent with the public and sharing their feedback back to them. What are the overarching opinions of the collective on the issues or proposals outlined? And how do my thoughts as an individual align with those around me? Sharing these with the community helps to build a stronger community, as mentioned before, who are more in touch with each other and the wider collective. Incorporating a dashboard such as this gives an up-to-date summary of anonymized data the public can quickly digest when giving their feedback. The interactivity allows for them to explore this further so they can see how the data relates to the issues they care most about. This easy experience and transparent relaying of feedback gives encouragement to the, to the community that they're being listened to and is more likely to generate a wider spectrum of engagement on large scales. The final aspect of this collaboration with the community is to respond to their feedback directly. After all, the purpose of engagement is to get the thoughts of the public and use it to benefit them and make your proposal a success. Perhaps our survey showed interest in running and attending community workshops where experienced growers can share their knowledge and skills with people new to the hobby. This would be a great way to bring the community together, introduce like-minded people to one another and strengthen the community bond throughout. This can be facilitated in ArcGIS as our hub site has the ability to host an events section. 
Here we can advertise all in the same place where information, where events are likely to take place, when they're likely to take place and what they're likely to involve. Members of the public can access this level, this part of the site freely and gain the information they're interested in to encourage them to get involved. Further encouragement to collaborate directly with the council is available from the sign up option. Here, a much more tailored level of experience and access can be granted to members of the community. Perhaps they want to receive email alerts as to specific events coming up, or they want to get involved in volunteering and helping to host sites, host, host events. By signing up, they can gain access to certain parts of our website, such as this event management section. Currently I'm signed in and have access. However, should I sign out? You'll notice that that event management section of the website is no longer visible and I have the option to sign up should I wish. Demonstrating how the council can collaborate with specific groups or individuals on a much more greater level of detail to ensure a much more tailored experience for them and a much better delivery in what you're proposing. The sharing and collaboration comes full circle here, where we've communicated the context and proposals to the community at the beginning. The informed public then engages with us, providing feedback and opinions so we know their thoughts, they know everyone else's thoughts, and our collaborated approach can begin based on their feedback. And then finally, we shared our response back to them by collaborating directly with individuals and groups, hosting events, and allowing them to get involved in the running of said events, bringing the community together as a whole. The example I ran through today was one of a local government, but the themes of sharing and collaborating with the community expand beyond this. A construction company, for example, may wish to engage with the community to get their feedback and opinions on an upcoming development to ensure that they upset the community as little as possible and have a healthy, healthy working relationship with them throughout the project. A retail expansion might involve asking the public what demand they have for certain types of shops and certain types of product, ensuring that when delivered, their needs are met and a successful retail experience is had. Or when, re when regenerating woodland, a site like this can be used to gather volunteers and advertise the events upcoming for members of the public to get involved with. So if you would like to build stronger communities that benefit our environment at the same time, I hope today's presentation has inspired you to use ArtGIS tools for collaboration. Thank you.